against all expectations, in the summer, it's actually really hot in here. A hot girl summer is also sweaty girl summer, okay? All hot girls are sweaty girls. It's true, I'm sorry, I don't make the rules. Hello, cheers. It's not, it's, this is not vodka, I'm just drinking water. Hello, welcome, my name is Noini, welcome to the channel. We like to talk about books here and today I wanna talk about books for hot girl summer. There are tons of classic hot girl summer recommendations and I don't just want to give another list full of books you've already seen before so I'm gonna do my best to also give you some you know a little bit of lesser known literary fiction that fits the hot girl genre also some fantasy that I think fits the bill because there's a severe lack of fantasy hot girl summer books I have some romance, I even have some mawas. Now what constitutes a hot girl summer book? It's, it's fairly simple actually, it's just if you read this book, you are hot. It's the law. And if you disagree with me, you're a criminal. So the concept of this video is going to be similar to my autumn book recommendation video that I did a while ago three seasons ago to be exactly. And that is that we will first talk about some classic hot girl summer books that you've probably seen recommended everywhere. And I just want to go over them quickly to give you an idea who I think would enjoy these books. So you know if you should pick them up or not. And then we'll go into all of my extra recommendations, which will be hopefully some that you haven't seen in these lists yet. Let's begin with the classic ones. First off, we have, I think, the most classic hot girl summer book author, and that is Sally Rooney. Sally Rooney. <laughs> For all the sad girls who never talk about their feelings. <laughs> Amazing, wonderful, groundbreaking, can do no wrong. So, normal people. This is a melancholic story about two smart people who don't know how to communicate their feelings to each other. So you should read this if you enjoy reading about that kind of dumb idiocracy. Beautiful World, Where Are You? This book is like, you know, when you're eavesdropping on people's conversation on public transport or just when you're walking in the city or something. It's really not that interesting and dramatic as like fiction, but you still keep listening because it's a real person story and that makes it extra interesting. That's like this book. It gives you a quick insight into these four young people's lives. It doesn't really have a very clear beginning and end or character development, but because of that, it just feels very real and that's what makes it so good and interesting. Then we have, I guess the unhinged woman book that started it all. Uh, that is My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atessa Mushfag. On Wednesday, we read pink books. This is a very hazy story with a depressive atmosphere because it is about a main character who struggles with depression. Read this if you're interested in mental health depiction that is not romanticized, it is gross and crude and also does not have to be with a character that you need to sympathize with because the main character is not sympathetic. The next one I cannot grab of the pile because I listen to the audiobooks, but the other queen I think of hot girl summer books is Miss Taylor Jenkins Reid. Audiobooks recommended. I've personally only read This Jones and the Six and The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. They are both hot girl summer books that feature hot girls in the summer. It's really great if you just want to read about that luxurious lifestyle and the drama that comes with it. Taylor Jenkins read books really speak to that part of your brain that secretly kind of still wants to be a rock star. Our next classic is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I would recommend this if you like short stories because it's basically a generational portrait of what it's like being a black woman in the UK where you follow the short stories of all all these different women and it beautifully ties together at the end. Then we have my personal favorite and that is Bunny by Mona Awad. I know I've talked about this book to death um, and I will not stop. This is great for anyone who has had a not like other girls phase, for anyone who rolls their eyes at their own thoughts, and most importantly for anyone who likes the prospect of a very vague and bizarre storyline. Next, 
classic Hot Girl Summer book. We have Trick Mirror by Gia Tolentino. This is an essay collection. She writes about being a woman, growing up religious, different scams. I loved, I loved reading about the scams. I, I love, I love reading about sweet, sweet justice. <laughs> this is great for all the cynical feminists out there that are tired of companies telling you to buy this thing and buy that thing for empowerment. And lastly, what I think is another classic hot girl summer book is Circe by Madeline Miller, the author who is, I think, mostly known right now for the Song of Achilles. This one's about the mythical character Circe. She's a witch who is exiled to live alone on an island, which sounds like a dream to me, but... I can understand that it might not be fun to be exiled by your family. Read this if you're okay with slow storylines, if it means the slow revenge of getting back at everyone that wronged her. Okay, moving on to the books that I don't think are classically mentioned in the hot girl summer book list, but I think really belong there. Let's start with the category hidden gems about unhinged women. Mm -mm. First, we have a Certain Hunger by C.J. Summers. Okay, maybe this isn't really an unhinged woman book because it's just about a food critic, you know? She writes in a very pompous voice, which really fits her character. And then, like, sometimes she kills her exes and then eats them. She makes nice meals, you know, she likes cooking. Believe it or not, this book really has a feminist flair to it, not because feminism means killing men. <laughs> I know some people think that that's what it means, but it doesn't. <laughs> the point of the story is that rage and violence and anger are often excluded from the female experience. But that's not true, you know, hot girls, we contain multitudes. Sometimes we're sweet and we'll bake you a cake and sometimes We'll, <laughs> we'll kill you with an ice pick and set your house on fire. The range. Next one, we have a YA thriller and it is... Well, I seriously almost hit myself in the face. It is Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. We follow a bunch of girls who grow up at the Innovations Academy where they learn to be perfect girls, prim and proper. They are educated, they are kept pretty, they're gonna be great to go into real life once they graduate. As long as they just take this little pill every evening before they go to bed, it'll be fine. It's a mystery story, so it's about these girls slowly realizing what's going on, why they are here at this academy, what will happen to them when they graduate, and they're slowly trying to rebel and Maybe not follow the rules for once. Okay, next. There's something I need to introduce you to. My next recommendation is a Korean webtoon or a manhwa, and it is The Villainous Turns the Hourglass. I have to give a little bit of context to this one. I have to explain to you what the villainous genre is before I can explain what the story is about. Villainous is a genre of comics where the general idea is that stories have a saint, like a good girl, and then a villainess who makes her life a living hell. You know, the other girls in the not like other girls. And the villainess always dies at the end, you know, main character gets her revenge. And villainous stories are about our main character waking up as the villainess in a story. And then they can decide whether they want to turn over their life for good and make sure they don't get killed at the end, or just go full <laughs> villainous and just become evil and do evil things. That's the villainous genre. This particular one that I'm currently reading, it's it's very long, it's about a uh, hundred chapters. I haven't finished it yet, but I'm far enough into it that I think I can recommend it. We follow Arya, who is the villainous of the story, who gets adopted into this rich family, and unlike the good girl of the story, she is badly behaved, unmannered, doesn't listen, is a mean, and so she is the villainess of the story, which means that at the end she's gonna die. Right when the moment hits that she is going to die, she finds out that the group girl has been scheming against her all this time and has been making sure that people don't like her and eventually she is the one that is getting the villainess killed. Just when Arya realizes this, she gets the chance to turn the hourglass to 
go back in time and do it all over again. So the story basically follows Arya as she tries to get back at our good girl character by plotting against her, trying to outsmart her so that eventually she doesn't get killed in the end. Does this have like really great plot and character development and well plotted out story? No, it's just fun. The, it's really just Arya plotting and scheming against our good girl character. It's giving Jude Duarte from The Cruel Prince. I know everyone always asks for books from the perspective of the villain. Everyone's always asking about more unhinged women stories. Literally this entire genre. <laughs> Next, hot girls read fantasy, especially fantasy that also makes them learn a thing or two. First, my recommendation is, okay, both of these books are very popular. Okay, I'm not trying to say that these are like hidden gems. I just think that we should properly categorize them in the hot girl genre. And the first one is The Papiwar by Arf Huang. It's a fantasy story based on actual historical events that happened between China and Japan. And we follow Rin as she joins the military and finds out she has like the power to access like the fire god. Most importantly, what I love about this book is that it really shows the horrors of a war. You know, instead of just using war and violence as entertainment and shock value as it is usually used in a lot of genre fiction. Throughout the entire series, Rin really goes through a corruption arc, so I think this is a fancy book for hot girls. Do check the massive list of trigger warnings though. One of my favorite fantasy series of all time, I definitely think is a Hot Girl Summer series. And that is the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jemisin. You know who's also a hot girl? The center of the earth. And she's angry. <laughs> She's a little unhinged as well in this series. The premise of this series is that once every hundreds of years, the earth just gives a fifth season of just pure apocalypse and people are just trying to survive this naturalistic, cataclysmic violence that is poured upon them. You follow three female perspectives as they try to navigate this landscape. It explores a lot of very interesting themes like oppression, motherhood, female rage, the destruction of the earth, climate change. I wish I could experience reading the first book for the first time. Oh, <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough how masterfully this book is written. The plot twists, the narrative devices that are used. It's so good. It's so good. And I want you to read it. Next, we have some romance books because hot girls read romance to fill the ever-growing void in our soul. The Void is a woman's favorite accessory. My first recommendation is She Drives Me Crazy. She was a basketball player. She was a cheerleader. Can I make it any more obvious? They start fake dating. This story is not just cute. It is also meaningful. It's about teens coming into their own, learning to take responsibility, dealing with your flaws, becoming a better person. Okay, um, I have a confession to make. So I know I often talk about how much I love romance books and how much I've learned to love romance books. Um, but I recently realized that out of all of the romance books that I have given four or more stars, um, half of those are the Brown Sisters trilogy. Which is why I keep talking about this, because every time I want to recommend a romance book, I feel like I always mention this, but that's because this series is literally half of all the romance books I've ever really loved. So yeah, if you haven't tried these yet, I think they're perfect for Hot Girl Summer because they... The reason I love these so much is because they are romance books that really, really do respect uh, its characters. You're not gonna find any perfect broody model love interest in here, but that's what I love about it. All of these characters are flawed, but you 100% understand why they fall for each other. And in case you're wondering, the last one, Actor A.J. E. Brown is my favorite. You can read them out of order, but I do recommend just starting with Chloe Brown. And also I do have to say, 
the way it is written is not for everyone. It can be a little crude the way Tali Hibbert writes, so just just know that. Hot girls are educated and interesting, so the last three books that I want to recommend are non-fiction and like philosophy related, but accessible to anyone. The first one that I want to recommend is At the Existentialist Cafe by Sarah Bakewell. There's only three things that a girl needs in her life. Freedom, being, and apricot cocktails. This is a non-fiction book about a bunch of existentialist philosophers explaining their life and also their philosophies. Existentialism is the branch of philosophy that has to do with basically what's the meaning of life, but not in a life is suffering, you're born alone and then you die alone kind of way, but more in a, hey, let's actually think about this in an interesting way kind of way. I've taken a university class on existentialist philosophy and I can say that this book really does a very good job at explaining these sometimes pretty difficult topics. A lot of existentialist philosophers lived in Paris where they went to their little cafes and they wrote their little their little essays and they talked to each other. So if you want to live out your hot girl summer sitting at a cafe staring longingly while you have deep thoughts fantasy, you should read this because you can do it. Another nonfiction that I would recommend is Men Explain Things to Me by Rebecca Solnit. It's a very quick, short read, short essays about all things feminism. It's called Men Explain Things to Me because the first essay is about mansplaining and Rebecca Solnit's take on that is generally that she thinks mansplaining is often misused, but the essay is mostly just about people assuming women don't understand something when there is absolutely zero indication that they don't understand said thing. And the other essays in the collection are about other feminist things as well, and I would recommend it. And the last one that I recommend is a short story that you can just get through super quickly when you're just sitting at the beach or in the garden or whatever. Uh, and that is The Ones Who Walk Away From Amalas by Ursula K. Le Guin. A short story that asks a lot of ethical philosophical questions. Let me just explain the premise of the story because the premise of the story basically is the story because it's a short story. We are introduced to a utopia called Omelas where everything is amazing, everybody is happy, but the author is aware that as the reader we're not very interested in this utopian society as she introduces it to us because we tend to not be interested in things that are only happiness because as humans we have somehow decided that happiness and joy are just silly and unintelligent because everything that is meaningful and capable of anything deep has to be brutal and tragic. Then we are introduced to the fact that the reason that in Amalas everyone is so joyful and happy all the time and prosperous, the reason that this can happen is because there's always one child that needs to live underground to be tortured indefinitely, is kept from food and warmth and light and clothing and human interaction to just rot away but barely kept alive in order to keep everyone else in this utopia 100% living in happiness and everyone accepts this as just a part of life. So in only a few short pages this story does a beautiful job at not only critiquing this idea that anything interesting must be about tragedy, it of course asks the ethical question of is this okay? Is it okay to just absolutely give one human being a horrible life in order to give hundreds of other human beings the perfect life. It explores how people just accept this as a part of life and also how some people walk away from Amalas and decide that they don't want to accept this. We actually discussed this short story on Twitch a few weeks ago. It was super interesting. I really loved hearing everyone's honestly like super interesting thoughts on this story so if you couldn't be there i still highly recommend that you um that you read the the, the short story because it, it really is one that you can have really great conversations with people about i hope you will all have a hot girl summer i hope i will but not yet because i still have a month left of writing my thesis so that's what I'll be doing. Anything else? As always, leave your recommendations for other hot girl summer books in the comments so we can all read them. Um, you should, oh yeah, you should subscribe. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you want to. And I really hope you had
nice okay anyway <laughs> i really hope that you had a great time with this video and i will see you soon in another one next week okay bye